welcome to What the Flick. It's 1987 in our heads and in our hearts, but not in our hair. Our no, hair no. is too small for this. We're talking about Rock of Ages. I'm Christy. This is Alonzo. This is Matt. Um, this is a very formative time for all of us. This, yes. this era, this music. Did this capture that sense of nostalgia for you? Matt Atchity, take it away. No. 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 Uh, Rock of Ages is based on a Broadway jukebox musical uh, that features a bunch of songs from a bunch of bands from the 80s. Such uh, as? Such as uh, Ario Speedwagon and who else? Foreigner. Foreigner. There's way too much Foreigner uh, in this movie. Uh, Journey. There's a lot of Journey. Quarter Death Flash. Lever, Quarter Flash. Pat Quiet Benatar. Riot. Yeah. Guns N' Roses. <laughs> um, Is there, yeah, there's a Paradise City in the yeah. beginning. A surprising yeah. amount of Twisted Sister. A couple of Twisted Sisters. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, this is based on the Broadway musical. Uh, the plot has been extensively rewritten mm. in this. Um, and it's one of those movies that thinks that merely recognizing songs makes you think you'll like it. Let me know. Now go. Your first album gave birth to some of Rock's greatest anthems. What's it like to be the Stacy Jacks? Stacy, you made it. Amen. Hey, man. Now this. Hey man. Hey man. I have to admit that I like this era and I like this music and that helps a great deal. Like if you made out with your boyfriend in the car past curfew to Skid Row's I Remember You, you will probably like this movie. You're a dirty, dirty <laughs> whore. No. We all knew uh, that though. <laughs> no, but I think it, it tugs at a nostalgia and it knows it's cheesy and it knows it's flashy and fake. And it's it, not it, that doesn't it's not? that doesn't excuse how boring this movie it's is. It's not boring. It's it too is long. Boring. It's too long, but it's not I, boring. I was expecting any manner of like ridiculousness or over the topness or cheesiness, but boring is not what I expected. And uh, and it, it it's a it, it just drags interminably. Um, the plot makes no sense because you've got Catherine Zeta Jones being all Kipper Gore and railing against, you know, oh, this satanic rock and roll. And the satanic rock and roll we're being given is foreigner, and, you know. And quarter flash, yeah, hard in my right. heart. You know, yes. like there's a, there's a motorhead <laughs> billboard over the Sunset Strip. Like that, that was the satanic music, but we're not getting right. any of that in this movie. But Stacey Jacks is meant to be right. the, the subversive character here, the Axl Rose character played by Tom Cruise. I, I found it's not even boring, it's lazy. This is what I had a real problem with, is that, first of all, 30 minutes into it, I was actually ready to walk out. Why? I, I found I just didn't care. I, You know, usually I'll sit in a movie, even if I'm not liking it, I kind of want to see where it's going. And I caught myself thinking, you know, 20, 30 minutes into it, I thought, I just could not give a shit how this story is going to end. I'm not sure the story matters, though. Well, but it's here's... the fun of the kitsch. Yes, but, yeah. here's not, where I but had, it's not fun. But here's where I had issues, <laughs> is that the songs don't even make sense. The dance numbers don't even make sense. And, and what I mean is, you know, in a typical musical written, you know, either with or without original songs, when somebody breaks into song, mm -hmm. it has something to do with what they're feeling at that point. When Catherine Zeta-Jones breaks into Hit Me With Your Best Shot, that has nothing to do with what they're talking about. That's, that's an inappropriate use of that song. It's like, oh, we just want to hear her sing that, so we're going to make her sing. Well, and the with the side, idea being that like people will recognize this, and so they'll like it. The flip side of that is that when Julianne Huff is walking in the rain, she's singing, standing on the corner, waiting yeah, in the which rain. Is the, which is the worst. <laughs> I hate right? when, when I, musicals are that literal and that like, I am standing here and doing the thing that I am singing about. But, but I'm Ugh. a little bit more OK with that kind of thing. It's just, you know, again, like, there's that song, there's a couple of other places that they do songs that just don't even really make sense to the story. Mm -hmm. That again, it's kind of, let's just put these in here because they're popular songs. And people recognize them. And then, you know, again, with like the Catherine Cedar Jones, like they're doing like Michael Jackson dance moves in this number. And it's like. I think that's, the, it's intentional though. I think it's meant to be rigid and awkward because she's this but, uptight bitch. But I thought if you're going to use moves that people recognize, mm -hmm. Why would you not use them in a way that makes sense? I found that almost everything about this movie was, it didn't make sense, it was lazy, it was again, it was, to me, it was the musical equivalent of what you get with the scary movies, mm -hmm. you know, or, or the, the epic movies, where it's just like, Here let's, it is. Do, let's just do <laughs> gags that rely on people's recognition of mm -hmm. something, and they'll think it's funny, and they'll like it. And that's what I felt like this movie does. And I was ready to walk out oh, until but... but Tom Cruise shows up. Thank God for Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise, say what you will about his personal life, yet again, and I'll say this again, 
he's a fucking movie star. <laughs> like he shows up mm -hmm. and he and he just goes for it in this role. He's playing this combination of like Axl Rose and Brett Michaels, mm -hmm. and and he's kind of playing this burned out rock star who's just on a whole other plane of existence. And he's a, hilarious. He's got this scene, you know, his first scene or one of his first scenes with Alec Baldwin, uh -huh. where he talks about burning the, you know, we're gonna burn this place down. And then you realize he's serious, mm -hmm. and then maybe he's not. And, and just the way yeah, he is goes he with using it, is that a metaphor, or right. is he really going to burn the place? And it's you don't hilarious. know. Hilarious, and he's got right. a couple other scenes that are great, and that's about it. He's he's terrific, but my only beef is I mean, he's the best thing in the movie, mm -hmm. no question. Definitely. But I kind of feel like he he comes out of the gate with this whole sort of weird eccentric, you know, yeah, in his own sort of universe thing, and that's all you get for the rest of the movie. I mean, like, in Magnolia, he comes out and does the whole crazy, you know, respect mm -hmm. the cock thing, but then you get all these other shades of that character. There's that interview, and there's the scene with the dad, and, like, the, the, you know, it goes somewhere. This, we get what Stacey Jacks is, and then we just get more of what Stacey Jacks is. Not true, is. because he meets Malin Ackerman and realizes that she sparks something but in him he didn't know was there, and he changes a little bit. Mm, the, he does. But the, the, the character bit. goes somewhere, but he bit. does the same shtick throughout. He doesn't get any less you weird don't see much of or weird in a different way I'll because agree of there. that. You don't see much of a change there. But do you really, really want a character arc in these characters? No, but I, no, no, but I, I just no, want him, no. I want more arrows in his quiver. I want more right. colors in what his paintbrush. What I will say is that it's unfortunate that we already have Get Him to the Greek as a film because I would love to see a whole movie about Stacey Jacks yeah. played by Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome, but we've kind of just gotten that. So. It's, it's an excellent fit though for his intense weirdness right off yeah. camera. Yeah, sure, no, 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 absolutely. And as you say, he is, he is a total fucking movie star, and he is like the rock star of movie yeah, stars. Yeah, no, no, so no. It's, it's, it's an excellent if, if anybody knows what it was like to be <laughs> Axl Rose right. in 1987, it's Tom right, Cruise, right. you know? So I, I, that was, was, was brilliant casting. Let's get back to the music. Okay. Whether you like these songs, or you never <laughs> like these songs, I found it's so, like, the, the, the glee machine in this movie. Right. Like, everything gets, just gets put into this Velveeta processor. Even glossy. when Mary J. Blige comes out, who can sing the paint <laughs> off of a chapel, <laughs> she gets buried in these, like, background vocals like the, and these really you know, awful orchestrations, so even she doesn't really get well, to bust out. Right. So, so in the in the in the scale of this movie, like Mary J. Blige and Alec Baldwin are <laughs> similar singers because they're just being drowned well, in this and awesome one of her, production. One of her early songs, when she sings "Any Way You Want It," mm -hmm. like that's another song used inappropriately. Like the message of that song, I don't think fits with what she's trying to convey. They just wanted to sing scene. that they song. They just wanted yeah. to sing that song. Well, then they do things like combine uh, "I Love Rock and Roll" with. Jukebox with Hero. Jukebox Hero, which I'm going to complain about from a technical aspect. Let's take the major key and the minor key and mash them up together. <laughs> well, Perfect. Let's show really... that we know nothing about music at all. Well, if you're going to get really, really nitpicky, and Ben's not here, but Ben and I did this with our friend Amy after the movie. Some of these songs hadn't even come out yet. Oh, yeah, the, the, the extreme, uh, more than words had not come more out yet. More than words yeah. came out in 1991. We sat there with our phones right. going, what but year did this again, song come I out? I wasn't even going to quibble about any, you <laughs> right. know, what? That's this movie isn't, isn't historically right. accurate? Um, let's please do numbers. Uh, oh, I'm going first? Please. Yes. I'm giving it a two. Almost a, a complete waste of time, I'm, but it's at least in focus. I'm going to be a goosh more generous and give it a 3.8. I'm giving it a 6.3 because I had a good time. And you don't need nothing but a good time. Oh. I'm not looking for anything but a good time. Where do I find it? I also, wanted a good time. <laughs> also, I to be clear, time at this. you cheated. You, you, you were drinking before this, right? I did not. I drank afterward. Okay, so our <laughs> average is a 4. And it's um, somewhere in there. In the yeah, tomato it's around well. 45 on the tomato meter. Okay. And, and lest people think that we are taking it too easy on Warner Brothers Pictures because... We're part of Warner Brothers now. This will be the best reviewed movie from Warner Brothers all year. Until uh, Dark Until, Knight until Dark Knight Rises. Right. All right. So yeah, ditch this. Go find a copy of Decline of Western Civilization Part Two of the Metal Years. It's way more fun. Bye.